Got to get those fat bumps to hit the record button, huh? Continuing from our discussion. It's like you shoved a kielbasa in a surgeon's bum. <laughs> we were talking about uh, rapid fire segment. We were going through some stats, and it took us, as you guys know, it takes us on a long winding road. And what we came to was we were talking about Deion Dawkins versus Matt Milano. Mm. Uh, but sprinkled in there is a little bit of Trey White. Signing Trey White to an extension will more than likely force you to make a decision between Milano and Dawkins. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but prior to getting to Milano and Dawkins, we do want to cover Trey White and his extension and or re-signing with the Buffalo Bills because there's something that's been going on that you guys probably aren't aware of. So click, pump. click, click, tell me more, Mario. <laughs> like button, like button. I was trying to do an intro. I did an intro. <laughs> you told me I can never do intros. <laughs> Paul, drop some knowledge on the nation for the cornerback market in the NFL because this is terrifying. Yeah, it's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the money, the teams. Yeah. Giggity. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, First of all, just read out the top five cornerbacks with their deals. Sure. Okay. okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Darius Slay at 16.6 mil. Byron Jones at 16.5. Xavier Howard at 15. Uh, they're both on the same team. Uh, James Bradbury at 14.5. Patrick Peterson at 14. This is top five. Two of those guys are on the team that they were drafted. Xavier Howard mm -hmm. and Patrick Peterson, who is at the at tail end of his tail career. end of his deal. Yeah. But if you you know, if you guys want to go to overthecap.com, great resource. If you look at the cornerbacks and, and their current cap salaries right now, that, that trend continues with guys that are not with the team that drafted them. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. If you look at the top 10 contracts, like there's just a couple that are extensions. Most of them are free agent deals, and that screws up the market like crazy for contract extensions. Because yes. when you want to extend a guy's contract, right? You're expecting to get him at, like, maybe not the most expensive position. Like, not making him the top paid player in yes. the position. Yes. That's what you're trying to avoid. They might be that for the first year because the signing bonus money they get, plus yeah. their face out. They make a ton of money their first year. But the whole goal is to not make them be the most expensive player at the position. Yeah. So, if you're looking at Trey, you're starting the conversation at 16. Like, that's where it starts. Yes. You're starting at 16 a year. And you got to get to the table before or after Marshawn Lattimore. You got to get to the table before Lattimore and Adams. And Adams, yes. Because Adams, Adams, the same draft class, went to yep. LSU, right? Even though he's a safety, the fact of the matter is, we're going to look at, you're going to look at the second production. Yeah, exactly. So, so you does this get work? To, you got to get to the table before Lattimore. Yeah, I believe that. Does this work in the Bills' favor that? He didn't get the defensive player of the year last year? I don't think that matters much. No, man. you think you don't think they use that as a chip? No, nah, I don't okay. think so. Even but though he played like it. I can tell you that uh, New Orleans isn't in nearly as good a cap shape as Buffalo. So New Orleans gotta make some moves to get Lattimore an extension. Buffalo could do it tomorrow. They right? could. They, they could they could sign him an extension tomorrow yes. if they wanted to. And not renegotiate this year. Now, do they have to even start discussions at eighteen, given that the the highest paid guy is 16. Oh, my God, 18. I know it's two more, Paul. I know that's it's two, two more. But it's $2 million more than yeah, the Yeah, but you look player. at the – no one's re-signed with the team that drafted him. Okay, so let me ask you. the price that. of looking, poker. <laughs> looking at the deals that are on here, right, of the top deals, all of them were signed this year with exception of Gilmore. Gilmore's at 13 mil. Uh, Peterson is, is the other exception. Okay. Here, right? All the other ones were all signed this year. So – to your point, is 18 a deal? Because if we it is. and we're looking at all the contracts, <laughs> almost all of them were signed this year, which means next year, you know what's going to happen. It's going to go up again. Yes. So you think 18's a deal? Like you're looking down the road in three years, you think 18's a deal? I think in corners? three years, what you're going to have, if the revenue stream with the NFL continues, you're going to have $30 million in surplus to play oh, with. Oh, my God. No, you are because it, the cap's been going up. Right, I, I get if it. The, if the cap, I understand that. Yeah. I think 18 it has to be the starting point for Trey because not so. Obviously, what the what the guy does on the field, he shuts down half of the field for you. He right. he gives you so many things. 
with the NFL, obviously the stupid cliche that we've all heard, it's a passing league now. Yeah. You're able to shut down half of the field, you can sure. win games. You win games, you, empl- you, you, you stay employed, mm-hmm. okay? And you put people in the seats, all right? Not a, not a super glorious position like a quarterback, but very essential in today's NFL. Mm-hmm. If you want the corner that you drafted that you think is going to be still good for five more years to shut down half of that field, like a Trey White, mm-hmm. you lock him up. It doesn't matter what it takes. That's what I feel. Unless you feel confident in yourself, Frazier and McDermott being defensive back gurus, can just find you can find his replacement. He didn't do it in Carolina, though. Let's just no. be clear. When Norman left, that place fell apart. Sure did. So, but one of the players that they drafted, probably off of part of his feedback, was Bradbury. He's the top five. Now top he fat, is top though. five paid corner. Then he gave up three hundred yards to Julio Jones. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> but the point being is this: I think that's one of the mistakes that he made that he doesn't want to make again. So they may overpay for Trey. Mm. And Norman's there too. Okay, let's. Norman's in Buffalo now. Right. Okay, maybe that could be. Maybe they drafted Norm, or they. Well, they I mean, dra- that, that's maybe they same. signed Norman to say, "Listen, can you talk to Trey for us? <laughs> Tell him what happens if you leave. Look what happened. You went, <laughs> you went happened to you Washington. <laughs> sure, you got paid, but <laughs> no one's considering you the top ten corner of all time. No, because he went to Washington. Because he went to Washington. Right. Yeah. So maybe that could be something in Trey's ear to be like, "Listen, that's I regret leaving. Ca- I regret leaving Carolina." For the that's money. that's interesting. I don't know. I did this is tin hat. But the point is this: I think he learned from his mistakes in Carolina that he won't let Trey go. Point. But I'm saying the fallout of this is, and it was great because we got a few minutes left. The fallout of that is when Trey gets paid. Yeah, it's, yeah. This is this is a when scenario. The yeah. two the two guys that are directly affected from Trey's contract when he gets signed are going to be Matt Milano and Deion Dawkins, both in contract years. I, you're only keeping one, Paul. You're only keeping imagine, one. Right. I have to imagine you're only keeping one. Because <laughs> if you kept both, both of those contracts would bleed into Allen and Edmonds and Oliver. Right. And you can't have that. Right. Well, okay, so. This is depressing. If, to talk if we about. look at the position, right, which position has seen the most invested in it in the last two seasons? Which position have they brought in more assets in the last two seasons, tackles. linebacker or tackle? They brought tackle. more tackles, right? Okay, I think so. In my opinion is they brought in more tackles. So they're going quantity over quality at this point? Like, what, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, I, I look at it this way, right? If they're pretty confident that they're going to be able to retain Milano, then why why look for his replacement, right? Why, why look for it? Why get yourself an insurance policy in A.J. Klein? Because you, you don't feel 100% confident you can sign him. I think, uh, I think A.J. Klein's kind of a devil you know scenario. Right? It's, He's the Band-Aid, so when you draft the next Milano? or he, he could be. In case you lose him? That's absolutely a possibility. Sure. Yeah, he could give you – he could be your Ramon Humbert. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, sorry. Like nobody. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like who doesn't want to <laughs> be who, – who doesn't want to be the next Ramon Humbert? It smells in here so bad. <laughs> I think there's a case to be made in either in either instance here, right? Yes. You've been constantly bringing free agent tackles because you've needed the help on the offensive line, Correct. and you just signed AJ Klein, which theoretically could be the door to Milano and say, "Hey, look, we got Klein; he can play for us if you're not here. So do yeah, what you're going to do on a three year. So you have time to draft his replacement. Exactly. You got two years. Yeah, exactly. You got two years after Milano. Well, when so, you trade for Adams, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Whole can of worms right there. He's got exploded. <laughs> but, but I mean, what what are you gonna do? Like, it, what is more? What is a more replaceable position? Tackle or linebacker? A linebacker. You think linebacker? I think a linebacker is more replaceable because if they feel as strongly as they do, now I don't know if it's ego, if it's stubbornness, or they can't be wrong. Like you can't be wrong about Josh Allen, or your Bean McDermott. I'll see you later because we always talked about how how tied together those guys are yeah. to the quarterback. Right. They have beat their heads against the wall about Deion Dawkins being the left tackle, even yeah. though there have been many people that have been opposed to Deion Dawkins as a left tackle, mm-hmm. and I understand that. So that is the guy 
it's not Milano that's protecting your franchise. Mm -hmm. It's the left tackle and Deion Dawkins. Um, so I think that's a more important position than Milano's. We'll garner more money than Milano's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree with that. with the signing of Trey White, they're not going to have the finances to, to sign Milano if he wants 10 to 15. Which is a realistic number. It is. It is. Ten, ten is a very I think Spot realistic Track number. had him at thirteen and change yeah. or something like that. But if he takes a more team friendly deal to stay in a, in a defense that he knows, because let's just let's be honest, let's talk about the player. Milano's very versatile. Sure. Um, I love how you called him a strong safety, playing down at linebacker. Yeah. He can, he can play a bunch of different things. He can cover. He can, mm -hmm. he can blitz. He can do a bunch of different things for you. I like him in this defense. I really like him. I don't know how his skills check transfers to another defense though yeah i think that's probably fair because you put right. him in the middle on a three four i don't like it no oh yeah no you i put agree. him on the outside in a four three and you got that six five 250 pound monster in the middle mm. taking blockers so, so do you let him so do you transition tag him and let him go find a deal and see if you want to match it i think you do but because at that point who's giving him top you're, 20 you're not going to franchise anybody next year anyway no I, that's what i'm saying is you can yeah. transition tag milano it gives him top 25 money doesn't I mean, it puts yeah. him puts him where he'll probably be anyway. So you transition, tag him. He goes, sees if, if there's an offer. If another team offers him something absurd, you walk away would. from it. I think a team would. I think that there would be team because when I look around the AFC East, I think there would be an AFC East team that would offer him a deal that the Bills would have to match. I mean, Buffalo did that with Charles Clay in Miami. That's what they they wrote him a deal that they knew Miami couldn't match. I know, and Bills ended up paying for it. Point <laughs> sure, did. Milano's better. Sure did. I think Milano's better in that respect. But could you see him in a Patriot uniform? Oh God, could you stop see, it! Could you see him in a oh. Miami Dolphin uniform? Could you see him in a Jet uniform playing next to Mosley? Like, oh. good God, he would. That's he would, a good point. He would be good on all of those teams if you transition yeah, tag him. You're not, you're not going to sign a guy because you're afraid of him going inside your division. No, no, no. I know that, however, those teams may feel that way to drive up his stock. Yeah. So the Bills don't sign him. Right. So well, then, I know we were kind of bickering back and forth about Trey at, you know, 16 or 18. I don't think the difference is going to stop. It's going to be the is going to be the difference maker between Dawkins and and Milano. 2 million, you know, is not going to no. be the difference maker between those two. No. But it does beg the question of you know, after you get through this season and you deal with Milano and you deal with Trey and you deal with Dawkins, you know what's the year after that? Now you got to start talking about your quarterback. You got to start talking about your middle linebacker. You got to start talking about your two starting wide receivers and Beasley and Brown because they'll be entering the last year of their deal. You got to start talking about Hyde because he'll be entering the last year of his deal. Like it gets, it's a slippery slope. Like this is just the start. So it's not necessarily Milano and Dawkins. It's Edmonds, Allen, Hyde, Brown, Beasley, probably Lee Smith, because he doesn't go away. He doesn't. <laughs> the cockroach of the Like bills. bad cheese. <laughs> Just keeps coming back. <laughs> I was going to say, you said bad cheese, I think of provolone, because I can't stand the smell. You don't like provolone cheese? I can't stand the smell. Oh, the smell's not great, but I mean... I Do you see why all these guys that got drafted in the third, fourth, and fifth round we always talk about? Yeah, how great value they are. Yeah, because they're going to be starting in two years. 